Good afternoon. Welcome to Lord's House as we gather for worship, and we especially welcome those who are watching online, and we're glad to have you here for worship as we gather in the Lord's House. Uh, just a couple of announcements. First of all, a reminder that our uh, midweek Lenten services continue this uh, Wednesday as we uh, continue our theme, uh, Our Crucified King, and so we invite you to be a part of that, uh, 4 o'clock worship. Uh, no communion this Wednesday, 4 o'clock worship, 6 o'clock worship, meal in between, and I think, I know, I think it's taco bar, so just, just, we'll go with that, okay? <laughs> taco bar for this Wednesday, so I know we had some mix-up in, in uh, publicizing that, but uh, this week, I believe, is the taco bar, so... Um, those are our announcements again this evening, this afternoon. Welcome to the Lord's house. Uh, our bell will call us to worship here as we gather, and we will begin with the singing of our hymn, 435, Come to Calvary's Holy Mountain. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. 
We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As he called an ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For zeal for your house has consumed me, and the reproaches of those who reproach you have fallen on me. Deliver me from sinking in the mire. Del me be delivered from my enemies and from the deep waters. Let not the flood sweep over me, or the deep swallow me up, or the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, O Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For zeal for your house has consumed me. And the of those who reproach you have fallen on me. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the third Sunday in Lent is from Exodus chapter 20. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant, or your livestock, or the sojourner who is within your gates. 
For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male servant, or his female servant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preached to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom and our righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Let's rise for our gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting there. And making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and oxen. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold pigeons, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. So the Jews said to him, What sign do you show us for doing these things? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. We join together in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we join in singing hymn 
579, the law of God is good and wise. In the name of Jesus Christ, the world's only redeemer, and the sinner's only hope, dear Christian friends. Not that I've been there, but in the Burren region of Ireland, there is a cave that is carved out of limestone. It has magnificent caverns and chasms and even a waterfall. If you go on a tour of that cave, the tour guide would tell you at some point to please hold on to the rail that is attached to the cave wall. And then the lights would go out. Deep underground, there is absolutely no light. The darkness is so intense and so oppressive that people can lose a sense of direction and lose their balance and fall. The devil, the world, and our sinful flesh work really hard to keep us in the dark, to keep us from seeing the light of Jesus. Without the light of Jesus, we stumble and fall. As we continue through this Lenten season, it's important that we see. There once was a time when every Sunday of the church year was given a Latin word or phrase to describe that Sunday, to give it a theme or an emphasis for that particular Sunday. This Sunday, the third Sunday in Lent, is known as oculi, which means eyes. The theme verse 
is from Psalm 25, verse 15. And I'd like you to repeat after me, and hopefully maybe this one goes home with you. Repeat after me. My eyes are ever ever on the Lord. Lord. For only he he will release my feet feet from from the snare. As we consider the gospel lesson from John chapter 2, may the Lord give us eyes to see our Savior and all that he has done for us. From John chapter 2, reading now at verses 17 and 19, his disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. Then the Jews demanded of him, what miraculous sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this. Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. At first glance, what we see with our eyes, we're not accustomed to seeing. This is not gentle, mild-mannered, Jesus teaching with his words. This is Jesus with whip in hand driving out the money changers and those who are selling sacrifices. This is Jesus flipping over tables, pouring all over the coins of the money changers. What we see with our eyes is Jesus cleansing the temple. Not just to make more room in the temple, not just to make the temple a quieter place or a less smelly place. Jesus is cleansing. He is getting rid of the old sacrificial system. A system that became a person paying a tax and sacrificing an animal to make their way toward God, to gain favor with God. But this is never what this was supposed to be about. It's not about what we give. It's not about what we do. This was about what God gives and what God does for us. It's about his mercy and his grace. What kept them from seeing can and does keep us from seeing. It's ritual. Not that ritual itself is bad. It is bad when it keeps us from seeing. You see, their hearts weren't in it. They were just kind of going through the motions. They were just checking things off the list as they went along. Jesus described these people with the words from Matthew chapter 15, verse 8, when he says, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Is that or has it ever been that way for you? That we just kind of go through the motions? without giving much thought to what we say or do? Is our worship something that we just simply check off the list for the week? Satisfying our requirement, if you will? Folks, it's not about what we do or about what we give. Jesus is the very sacrifice we all need. 
It's what he has done for us. Jesus told the Pharisees, I tell you, one greater than the temple is here. Can you imagine how their minds must have just rattled when he said that? Greater than the temple? Are you kidding me? The temple? But all those sacrifices that ever were all pointed to the one sacrifice that came that was greater than the temple that fulfilled everything for us. Repeat after me. My eye, yeah, well, no, sorry. <laughs> Don't repeat that. <laughs> repeat after me. My eyes are ever, eyes are ever. On, the Lord. on the Lord. For only he, for only he. will release my, feet release my feet from the snare. It's in this reading of the gospel that we see our Savior's zeal, the zeal of Jesus. Now, the word zeal is defined as passion, fervor for a person, cause, or object, eager desire or endeavor, enthusiastic diligence. I like that, enthusiastic diligence. Jesus has zeal for God's house the temple, the house of prayer, where people came to receive God's abundant mercy and grace, not at a cost, not at a price, freely given to them, receiving it freely, for that is what God's desire is to give to his people his abundant mercy and grace, not for payment, but for free. We see our Savior's zeal for people. Jesus was not going to let anything get in the way of accomplishing God's will for forgiveness and salvation. To give his grace and mercy to us. Nothing could get in the way. Not the chief priests, not the Pharisees, not the temple, not the sacrificial system, not even the cross would get in the way of his carrying out God's will to bring to you and me forgiveness and salvation in his name. But what keeps us from seeing with our eyes the zeal that he has for us? One of the things that keeps us from seeing his zeal is thinking in our minds that somehow, someway, God is still angry with us. That somehow, some way, the wrath of sin has not been taken care of. That the cross has not completely fulfilled that. And it keeps us from seeing that zeal that Jesus has for us. Another thing that keeps us from seeing our Lord's zeal is we think that somehow, some way, we have to prove ourselves worthy. Worthy of Him. And so we fix our eyes on trying harder, working harder living better, praying more, reading scripture more. None of that's bad. 
but it keeps us from seeing his zeal, his grace and mercy when we focus on that, when we make that the place where our eyes are locked. Doing all those things. And again, it's not about what we do. It's not about what we give. It's about what he has done and what he gives to us. Again, my eyes are ever on the Lord. For only he will release my feet from the snare. It is the cross that is sufficient. It is sufficient for all that we need. It's what God has done and what he has given us. Jesus is that once for all sacrifice for us. There is no other offering. No other sacrifice needs to be made. Jesus is our payment. In him, we are forgiven and made clean. It's in Jesus. And that's why we still preach Christ crucified. Paul talks about that in the epistle lesson this afternoon. He says, we preach Christ crucified. And we do that. Because that changes everything for us. It's Christ crucified who takes our guilt and gives us innocence. It's Christ crucified who takes the dirt of our sin and has made us clean. Clean through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. It's Christ crucified that exchanges our condemnation and gives to us the precious gift of salvation that is ours in Jesus Christ. And it's why we gather together. It's why we come together around God's word and sacrament to be renewed and strengthened in the mercy and grace that is ours in Jesus Christ, to see our Savior and to see all that he has done for us. Dear friends, through our Savior's death and resurrection, the way has been opened to the Father, for us. We see the way clean and clear by God's grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's where we fix our eyes on Jesus and all that he has done for us. That brings us confidence and assurance in his name. One last time. My eyes are ever on the Lord. Only he will release my feet from the snare. Dear friends, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in true faith and to Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Our service continues with the prayer of the church. Let us all rise for prayer.
Our response as we pray is, on our hearts, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. Lord Jesus Christ, lead your church on earth to be a house of prayer for all the nations. Disrupt our petty preferences and cultural bias so that we might welcome people from every nation, language, and background. On our hearts, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. Lord Jesus Christ, as you delivered the people out of slavery in Egypt and taught them how to live as your people, so teach us to live according to your righteous instructions so that we may live peacefully with you and our neighbors. On our hearts, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. Lord Jesus Christ, you are well acquainted with grief and death. Bring your comfort to all those who are suffering in grief. Point them to the hope that your Father's house, in your Father's house, are many rooms, and that you have gone to prepare a place for us. On our hearts, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. Lord Jesus Christ, intercede for all those struggling with relationship issues, whether in friendships, family dynamics, marital struggles, or relationships within the church. We pray that you would bring repentance, forgiveness, and reconciliation in the midst of such struggle. On our hearts, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. Lord Jesus Christ, send your strength to all missionaries. Embolden them to preach the power of your cross. Encourage them in their service by the same message they proclaim that you have died and risen for us and our salvation. On our hearts imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. Lord Jesus Christ, look with favor upon all who are sick, injured, and recovering. Have mercy upon them and restore them to health according to your good and gracious will. On our hearts, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace. Lord Jesus, we commend all of these people and situations into your hands. For you have promised to hear our prayers and intercede for us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who gave the temple of his body over to be crucified on the cross, then raised it up on the third day, just as he has promised. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace and with great joy. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this meal. Keep us steadfast in the true faith, ever hearing and proclaiming Christ crucified for all. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.